<laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Everybody's on here today. Hi, guys. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I am so glad to be back here. I had a great time. I taught a Zoom class uh, the first first day I was missing um, and had a great time with uh, that group of gals. They were so much fun. And then last Saturday, I was painting with the Harborside Painters in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, just out in part of Toronto. So, and I had a great time with them. Got to spend a little bit of time with uh, some of the regulars that we see on here. I got a big bone cracking hug from Sue Potts and got to see Deb Pels and uh, Gail Wolseley. And uh, it was just wonderful. Got to spend time with in a real classroom. It was great fun. So we had a great time and uh, lots of laughs. It's always a lot of laughs when you get to sit in a classroom with a bunch of crazy painters. So today I'm back to play with you crazy painters. So today we're going to be painting um, Asteracea. Whenever I do one of these things, I try to find out as much as I can about the flower that I'm painting. And this one actually surprised me. Uh, Asteraceae is actually the genus or the family that this flower belongs to. Um, and this is a simple daisy or more commonly an oxide daisy. And in the course of creating this, I, I discovered something really interesting. Did you know that there are 23,600 species of Asteraceae? That's a lot. And that includes um, sunflowers, obviously, uh, Shasta daisies, chamomile, um, echinacea, a, a huge variety of plants and some that I didn't know. Um, mums, for one, I with that one blew me away. And um, blanket flowers, I didn't realize that they belong to that genus either. So there are so many flowers that we see on the daily that um, I did not know belong all belong to the same family. Some, like marigolds, I didn't know that. Asters, um, hence the name Asteraceae. Asters is part of that family, and so are dahlias. Uh, there's a whole range of flowers that I did not know belonged all belong to the same family, and it has to do with how the petals are arranged and the number of seeds. They only produce one seed per, so or not per plant, but you know per pocket. So it's an interesting thing. So I thought it would be fun to paint this. Out of all of the French floras that we've done, we haven't done a daisy. So I thought that this one would be uh, fun. It's a nice soft color palette. It's not too strenuous. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. We do have giveaways today. Uh, I did post the giveaways from, from last Saturday. I posted them up yesterday. I had a few computer issues this week and uh, website issues and message issues. I've had issues, issues. So, uh, the giveaways for today are, um, we have three of them, uh, and they are courtesy of Southern Ridge Trading and uh, Dynasty Brush, and of course us. We always tuck a few little goodies in there as well. So we've got a nice little uh, giveaway for everybody today. And um, and what else? What's new with you, Sunshine? Not a thing? Nope. nope. Yes. He's a one-syllable person today. So, uh, if you guys are ready to get started painting our Asteraceae, so am I. I like this one. I'm a fan of daisies anyway. I think they're just a fun flower to paint. And I decided to do some, switch this up a little bit. And we've pulled a few other colors into this flower just to make things a bit more interesting. And, um, the same with the leaves. Although ordinarily my leaves are pretty simple, I decided to do something a little bit different this time. And the same with the center of the flower. Decided to go with something a little softer. And then we're working with a, a variety of colors for this daisy. We've got a little bit of gentle heather, which is this, this pretty pink purple tone. It's really soft. I really, really like this one. And then, of course, got to have Bahama Blue because me and Bahama Blue, well, that's one of my favorite colors. A uh, little bit of warm white. And then uh, for the center, we're going to be working with this. This is Sunset Gold. I love this, this yellow and Orange Flame. And, uh, and I decided to add something a little deeper to this. I used Prussian Blue. 
If you don't have Prussian blue, you can always use a little bit of Payne's gray. Um, we're just using this as a toning color to deepen things a little bit. So we're going to be using that. And then of course our greens, I'm using lush green and some sprout and some Prussian or uh, Prussian plantation pine. And of course I can't go anywhere without my Ashfaltum. So palette is pretty straightforward. Um, it's also easy to substitute if you don't have a particular color. So if you don't have gentle heather, you could use wild orchid. Um, you just need a pinkish tone of, with a little touch of purple in it. I think wild orchid would do nicely. Or you can fit out a little of uh, uh, purple petal. Any one of those colors would work very well. Um, as for brushes, we're going to be pretty simple today. Um, I'm using my half inch faux squirrel angle and a three eighths angle. Of course, my extra long detail liner, the Dynasty Micron, it's a 10 aught. And for our lettering, we're going to use a zero rigger. And uh, I think I'm going to, for base coating, I'm going to be using uh, this one. It's a number four round in a black gold. So we don't need a ton of brushes. And uh, we are going to need a stencil brush for this because we're going to be doing a little bit of stenciling in that background. And then as for stamps, I decided to keep it simple. Uh, I'm using my Vintage Note, which is, my, I think, one of my favorite stamps. And then I went to my, my favorite grunge set, and I went and got some of these. The Crackle, one of these text ones, that little swirly one the um, signature block and then of course I can't do anything without my postage cancellation stamps so we have those and you have a choice you can either use a white stamp pad or you can use white acrylic paint I'm going to be using acrylic paint and my favorite mini brayer so this one is going to be pretty straightforward So to load your stamps, you just use your little mini brayer, roll out some warm white on your palette, and then just load up the stamp. Doesn't have to be perfect. We don't really want it to be anyway. So I'm going to just press my stamp into place in a few locations. I don't want this too solid. I kind of like some of these open spaces in there. So a little bit, as I said, it doesn't need to be perfect, but I do like a little of that. I like the text. Well, Deb uh, finally received her state fair wings. Oh, good. So as promised. Oh, nice. For the puppers, kitties, and all the furry ones. We love so much. Love Deb, Mark, and Rapid. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your state, state fair win. I think that that's phenomenal. It takes guts to enter one of those things. So congratulations. I'm very happy for you and even happier for our puppers. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'm going to add, oh, let's do some crackle. I love the crackle. So a little bit of white. I like this. This grunge set is one of my favorites. I like these little bits of crackle that it has that I can add wherever I choose. I like that. And this one is so pretty. It's just got that nice little signature like Brock on it. So let's load that one up. I like the texture that's in this one. And I'm just going to start filling in some space with this texture. I don't want to have too much negative space in there. So I'm just going to fill that in. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I love this one. It's that swirly thing. We don't have too many of those stamps left. I think there's only about a dozen left, these stamp sets. And we cannot get any more. So, and I use this one all the time. So, 
Hmm, see how pretty that is. Just adds a little lacy texture to things. And then I've got this one, which kind of looks like something out of a receipt book. I'm going to tuck a little of that in somewhere, maybe a little there. And then I could just go hog wild with this because I like the cancellation stamps. So a little bit of white paint. And I can pick and choose where I put them. And they don't have to be perfect. Um, I found oodles of these things, these cancellation stamps in other stamp sets. Um, so I like these little itty bitty ones because I can tuck those wherever I like. And I like this oval one because it's just different. And those ones I found, those ones are a Stampenda set that I had. And it had a whole bunch of different things in it. I just like the change in the shapes. So you can add pretty much whatever you like to this. It doesn't have to be exactly what I used. You can add a variety of cancellation stamps to it, whether they be individual or from a different set. Um, I found these um, at a dollar store and there's all kinds of cancellation stamps and those will work fine too. There's oodles of things you can do. So I'm going to dry this. I think that's good because I've still got some stenciling to do. So I'll make sure that this is good and dry. Now, if you're using one of these little brayers, I'm going to show you something. <laughs> I had one of those the moments. I had been struggling to clean this thing for the longest time until Miss Sandy McTeer showed me this. That if you push on one end, you can take the roller out, and just drop it in your brush basin and let it soak to take the paint off. I, it was one of those the like, moments that it actually worked exceptionally <laughs> well. So I'll put my stamps away. I'm gonna, that's one brush I didn't talk about. I'm gonna grab my fugly brush. Um, this one still has the new car smell. I'm going to give that a good soak and we're going to put a wash of asphaltum over top of this. I want to sort of set all of this stamp work back a little bit. So, need a new bottle of asphaltum. Here we are. Looking. Oh my goodness. Everybody's in here today. Good morning. It's a Calgary. Somebody's from Calgary, from Michigan, from California. Boys, oh boys, everybody's here. Good morning. Didn't even, I didn't even take the time to sort of look up, see who all was here. So it's nice to see you all. So I'm going to use my fugly brush and a little bit of thin dash faltum. And I'm going to bury some of this. I'm just going to knock it back a bit. Ooh, that might be a bit much. There we go. I like this softened a little. Just have to make sure your paint is, is dry, otherwise you end up with beige over top of everything. That's not good. Asteracea, one of 23,600 varietals. That's mind boggling. And then I saw a list with just a few of the more common ones that kind of blew me away. So it's like, wow, that's a lot of flowers in the daisy family. So I'm gonna dry this real quick. I like the warmth that this little wash puts onto things. It sort of warms up all that black a little and subdues the white a little. If you find the white is too bright, 
Uh, you can always use a color like cobblestone instead. It will work just fine. I think I put cobblestone in the in the instructions. But I am currently out of cobblestone. So warm white it is. So I just I really like this subdued tone. It keeps it from getting too cold, too too heavy, visually heavy. So I'm gonna lightly put another coat on, just a little bit more. By putting on thin layers, I have control over it, so I can stop when I'm happy. If I find that it's too dark, I can pull a little off, but just a little. So that gives us a really nice warm tone to the black. And it gives us a little added depth too. We haven't done one of these French florals in quite a while. Um, I went through the website last night and um, put all of the other ones on sale. So if you're looking for a set and don't have any of the others, there's we put all of them on sale for you. And I'm going to sound a little, my voice may break and crack. I seem to have picked up some kind of a little bit of a cold, I think. So my voice keeps cracking and breaking. <laughs> so we've got that nice warm background. So I'm going to grab one of my favorite metallics. I love this one. This is uh, Decorts Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold. I love this one. And that's what we're going to use for the stenciling. So put a little of that on my palette. I'm gonna grab my half inch stencil brush. And this stencil, this is M229. It's called Postal or Postal. I love this one. I'm going to use this because it has cancellation stamps in it. Yes, I know. A little predictable, but there we are. So I'm gonna pick up a little of that 24 karat gold on my stencil brush, and I'm going to apply that color circular fashion, and I'm gonna change directions frequently so I don't get a build up. Now I've let this image go off the page or off the surface a little bit, um, just for the sake of interest, so it doesn't look so structured. And I love how that looks. So we have a little cancellation stamp up there. And then this one also has a little bit of a cancellation stamp as well. And I like this one, it's a little on the interesting side. So I'm, where am I gonna put it? Um, I think I'm going to come up here over here to this side and I'm going to repeat that little bit of gold I like the gold on this just adds a little bit of bling warms up again keeps things warm we have such a nice warm tone going on with this so Et voila. now you can do as much or as little of this as you like if you wanted to come down here and put another one, um, you know, just off the page a little bit. Won't hurt. It just gives the illusion of con continuity that, you know, that the pattern or that the design continues on elsewhere. And it just makes for a much more interesting surface. Now, you are not limited to just doing um, a postal thing. If you wanted to do something else, with a little more elegance, you could you know, pop in a little bit of a brocade if you wanted to in, in lieu of. So don't feel that you're obligated to use precisely what I've used. You're not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, in fact, I encourage you to play with things. I really love these, you know, elegant, frou-frou, very Baroque looking uh, florals. And when it's tied in with all of this text and these cancellation stamps, it just brings in another element. And so if you don't have a postal stamp, go and grab one of these lacy Baroque things or 
um, or anything like that. Some something ornamental or decorative would work really, really well. So, but I'm kind of partial to the cancellation stamps. <laughs> So that's my my addition. I like these things. So I'm going to make sure this is good and dry, and then we're going to put our line drawings on. I wanted to work this one from start to finish because I wanted to... Um, I know we have some people watching that are beginners um, and would like a few tips for, for this type of thing. So um, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about tracing and transferring. Now I myself, most people will trace their line drawing onto uh, tracing paper or they will photocopy it onto parchment. Um, I don't do either of those things because I just have always found this simpler. I use, I make a photocopy of my original line drawing just on copy paper. I cut it out to the shape and size of the surface when possible. It's not always possible, but. And then I will tape it into place onto my surface, like so. So that it's firmly in place. And that way I'm not having to chase my line drawings. And then I'm using white graphite. I slide it underneath. And then I trace my line drawing with a red gel pen. I like the red for a couple of reasons. One, it's easy to see where I've been. And I like these fine point pens. This is a 0.38 because it doesn't leave thick and heavy white lines everywhere. I find the, the heavy lines are very hard to erase if there's any left, if they're showing after you're done your painting. So I prefer to use a fine gel point pen for this. It just seems to make it easier in the end all the way around. And this way, So if you've been cruising around the website, you might notice that we added some new surfaces um, to the website. There's going to be some more added this week. I have a set of ornaments coming out in uh, the ornament issue of Painting World magazine. And uh, we will have those up on the website this week. So we have uh, already we've got the ornaments in stock already so and I've got another set of ornaments coming out soon and we have those up on the website as well they're kind of cute and for those of you that were looking for the jumbo mittens the big six by ten mittens we have those on now so those arrived the other day da, da, da. Now these leaves are ragged. They're meant to be ragged. So don't worry about getting them absolutely perfect. They're doesn't, they don't need to be. I kind of like them when they're really imperfect and ragged. And not very pretty. I've always thought that they were an interesting counterpoint to such a delicate and pretty flower that they have such a ratty leaf. So I think we're just about there. I don't think I missed anything. Just double check. No, nope, I think I got everything. Maybe. Yep. So I have my daisy. I'm going to put one little thing in. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The little bullseye. Excellent. So we have our daisy 
I'll trace the lettering on a little later because I have a couple of tricks to show you to get them nice and clean. So we're going to set that background back a little bit more. And I'm going to do that with a float of lamp black. And this is where your half inch angled shader comes in. Tracy Kirsch just became a member. Yay, Tracy, <laughs> welcome. Give me a few hours after the uh, after the live and um, we will make sure that you get all the access that you're supposed to have as a member. Welcome, happy to have you. So I'm just floating in and around my floral with a nice wide float of lamp black. It can be nice and dark close to the flower and then let it fade out a little as it comes away. But this just helps lift all of those petals off of the background. It gives it a nice little bit of height. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you end up getting black on top of your line drawing, don't worry about it. You're going to be base coating this anyway. So just get a little of that color in there. I keep losing the jet. <laughs> so that little bit of black under there just gives this nice height and it gives that background a little more depth. The more layers you put on the more depth you get as long as they're controlled. What? What? Oh, right. So I had a lovely card from uh, one of our viewers. She watches all the time. And it, it was so sweet, such a lovely card. Um, and she made a donation to the Glitter Fund. Um, and she asked that uh, we sort of keep that anonymous. So I will, but I wanted to let you know uh, that her donation was extremely generous and uh, and to let her know how grateful we are and how much we appreciate her support so yes So I've got a little bit of lamp black back there. Now, at this point, it doesn't really show that much because it's black on warm black. So it's, it's not a sharp contrast, but it will be when we start adding all of these lighter values and the contrast will amp up, amp up a little bit. So there we go. I'm just putting a little more of that black in behind the leaves and down here in this corner just so that it gives it some nice depth. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then while I have this lamp black out, I'm going to go all the way around the outside edge with a nice wide float. Wider in the corners like this. Nice big float of lamp black all the way around the outside. Just 
just like that. That little float just gives this a little extra something something. Just gives that edge a little more weight. Gives the whole painting a little more weight visually. So I like to do this first because we want the floral to sit on top of it. We don't want to bury that. There we go. So I'm going to dry this and then we're going to start working on that floral. I like these French florals. They're, they work up quickly, um, but they're quite pretty and it lets you focus on one individual element, which I think is always fun because you can make it as realistic or as simplistic as you like. nice and dry and don't forget hit that share button hit the like button and uh, if you don't follow my youtube channel hit the subscribe button you can join the channel it doesn't cost anything hit that big red subscribe button so i'm using the round to base coat my leaves or bleh bunny leaves, petals. And I try to do it by pulling it all in one stroke like so, so that I get some interesting stria, some fine lines in the petals. But I don't get any stop and start marks. So I always think of them as individual petals. And then when I'm base coating these, I try to remember to leave a very thin space between petals. You're going to fill it in with shading and whatnot anyway, but it'll help you. You won't have to come back in and trace the line drawings back on. Not only that, if you do it this way, you can do these flower, these petals in one coat. So this is just warm white. I like, love when I'm doing this that I create some thin lines in the petals. You can't see them on camera, but they're there. Just It's just the fine brush marks that are left when you're base coating. And those become part of the floral. They become part of the petal. And it actually helps you in the end especially when we're putting in all of these other colors because it just adds an element of realism to these petals and a little bit of texture. And a lot of the time I will put down a coat of thinned gesso on these and that works really well. Again, try to maintain that really thin space between. It will help you in the end. And I just thin out my warm white with a little bit of either Joe Sonia's or even just a little bit of water. Of course, I had to find like the oldest round brush in my, my bin. This one is not in the best shape, but it'll do the trick. Cool. 
easy peasy. <laughs> Nancy missed the beginning. Okay. We just did a bunch of stamping and some stenciling. Nothing too, too strenuous, but it was fun. It'll be an easy catch up. This one is um, Kathy McAllister. Mm -hmm. Just wondering what are some of the projects that you've recently done on your paid membership group? Are they different from the projects that are on Saturdays? Uh, uh, yes, the projects that we do in the membership group are very different. Um, we, we do a little bit of uh, pattern based painting. Um, but a lot of the time we have challenges. Right now they're doing um, a lot of fruit using watercolor pencils and colored pencils and acrylics. Uh, we're using a variety of media. Um, one week we'll be doing drawings and the next week we're doing something with chalk pastels. And I try to keep them as busy and um, challenged as I possibly can. And, and hopefully they learn something new every month. Um, I love watching the challenges. Uh, we have some great prizes that we give give away for the challenges. And uh, so, yes, we do try to keep it very different. Um, we do some mixed media. We do a little bit of everything. And we do go a little more um, challenging. So it gets them out of their comfort zone. But no, the projects are not the same at all. <laughs> and a full membership, um, you have access to all the previous classes, the live classes that we do with the membership group, and you have access to a lot of the material. What are the size of the mittens on the website? Six by ten six and a half by ten and then we have uh, the set of ornaments which are the five inch little little mittens they're really cute now when we put the I put this pattern up the other day um, I had a problem with my software and uh, it would not allow me to attach anything to it. I couldn't insert images or anything. I was having trouble with it. Um, had to uninstall it, reinstall it, and then try again. And got the pattern all done, got the pattern up on the website, discovered that it hadn't attached the line drawing. So the if you ordered it and were amongst some of the first to order the pattern, you may be missing the line drawings. If you are, uh, by all means, let me know. Um, I know a few, and I, I've just sent them a new copy of it. The pattern has since been fixed. Took a little bit, but we got it fixed. And so if you ordered it last night or late yesterday afternoon, it should be complete. And Kathy McAllister is now a member of Creating a Tree. Oh, great. Glad to have you aboard, Kathy. And you can join us for the live class on uh, Wednesday and the chat with Tracy or the talk with Tracy on Tuesday. We have a live Tuesday. So. I'm almost done. Crazy base coating. Now. A lot of the time, and I tell people this all the time, I very rarely put more than one coat for a base coat, simply because I put so many other colors on top of it, 
it kind of makes layering three or four or five coats of paint redundant. Um, I'm going to put a little coat of warm white in the center like so. Now you can do this for the leaves, but in this particular case, it's not necessary. Um, simply because the leaves are going to be fairly dark anyway. And so we don't need to have them too, too bright. I want the darker values. So it's going to be influenced by that black, but it's not going to be a problem for us in this case. So there we go. We've got a daisy. And then I'm going to dry this real quick. It's one of the reasons I love this heat gun. Love, love, love it. So our base color for the stems and the leaves is this. It's lush green. If you don't have it, antique green will work just fine. So antique green. Now when you're base coating these leaves, don't worry about them being perfect because they're not going to be and I don't want them to be. So I just get a little color in there. These leaves are going to look rough and that's all right. They look rough anyway. They're daisy leaves. So they have that ragged appearance anywhere anyway. So it doesn't really matter if they're perfectly shaped. Kind of like some more interesting. I like this lush green. It's pretty green. It's pretty much antique green, but little, just slightly more opaque. Just slightly. But it's a very pretty green. There we go. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> I know. Renee is quiet today. I don't think he's feeling all that well today. Um, what is for dinner? We're having a barbecued steak this evening. And some grilled pierogi. And maybe a nice salad. I picked all the Swiss chard yesterday out of my garden. So I am thinking I might do something with that. I came home with some kind of a bug. Uh, I'm thinking it's I'm thinking it's just a cold because it's uh, I don't feel terrible. It's just scratchy throat and a runny nose. So a little bit of luck. That's all it is. Just a cold. What a novel concept. <laughs> After the last three years. So we have a daisy. Now, this is going to be surprisingly quick to paint. Um, I'm using a little bit of Bahama Blue for our shading color. It, we've got a little bit of Asphaltum. I'm bringing in a little bit of Gentle Heather. Just, it does something really nice for, the, for those petals. And then, of course, we have our Warm White. And then we're going to deepen all of that shading with some Prussian Blue. Now, I know that this seems like an odd um, color palette, but I, as you can see, it works very well. So we're going to start with that Bahama Blue, and we're going to use that to separate the petals and to shade in towards the center. Give us a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to use a half inch angle for some of the bigger floats, bigger shadings and whatnot. And then a little bit of Bahama Blue. I'm going to thin this out a little bit. I don't want it full strength. 
um, then it becomes a little garish. So I'm going to use it just thinned out a little. Maybe a bit too much. <laughs> there we go. I think this is better. So I'm just putting a nice little U-shaped float at the base of the leaf. If you've watched me paint sunflowers, you'll know what I mean. It's just leaving a little space like that. I'm going to uh, make it a little darker so you... it doesn't show very well on camera. It's a little brighted out. So I'll deepen the color a little. I'm going to put that U-shaped float just like that at the base of the leaf. Be a little tighter in a few of these smaller ones. Like so. You can deepen it. You can come up about one third of the way, even halfway up the petal, and it's okay. So that little bit of blue is going to do a couple of things for us. It's just going to draw the eye towards the center of the flower. It's also going to help create a little bit of depth on that flower. And then we get this little petal in here. This one here. These ones is where I really like to see that U shape because it creates that bowl effect in the leaf so it doesn't look like a flat leaf. So get a little in there. And then don't forget to come back in and start separating these petals. So, oops, a little too much. So a little bit to separate. I know where they overlap, you want to get a little of that blue in there. Doesn't have to be a lot, just a little. It helps give you lots of depth on these petals. But they don't have to be meticulous floats either. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. Because we're going to put a bunch of other colors in here. So and give yourself a break. That little bit there to add the depth and separate these petals. If you find some of your petals are just turning blue, that's okay. Don't panic. We're going to be adding more white to these petals anyway. We still have to highlight them. And so there will be more white. So don't panic. If you feel they're getting a little overdone, it's okay. So yes, yeah, some of them are, might look a little heavy handed. So once I've done that, I'm going to come back in with the Bahama Blue yet again. I'm going to thin it out a little and I'm going to float right across the base of some of these leaves right here, tight to the center so that it's a little darker right at the center on the back side here, just a little. So now, this is what we've got. So looks a bit much, but that's okay. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with it. So we've got all of that in. We're going to come in with a little bit of thin dish Fulton. And I've got it straight on the brush here. You're going to pick up a fair amount of water and blend it out well. You don't need a lot of color but you are going to blend it out well. And you're going to come in and deepen those floats. Remember that U-shaped float? You're going to deepen that. And it's going to change the color of that blue to sort of greenish. And you're going to let that color walk out. And it deepens those colors. Um, if you want to grab a mop to soften that, you can just so that you don't end up with a harsh line. Little softening. And in and separate all those petals. It's a weak float, 
It is not a lot of color, but it's enough. Getting underneath all of those petals. Again, this just deepens that shading, helps define all of those little shaded areas. Again, if you feel that your petals are looking a little muddy, don't worry yet. You will see. That little bit of asphaltum does wonderful things for petals, especially for white flowers. It's going to deepen things, but it, it keeps this from getting too cold looking. And it keeps these looking sunny, which is what we want. So I've got a little float of Ishvaltum in there, and it just subdues that brightness, that over the top blue a little bit, and helps it from getting a little too icy, a little too cold. So now comes the fun part. Uh, remember I talked about adding a little of this. Just adds a little bit of life and a little bit of depth. It is such a soft blue. It's very pretty. What's that? I love Bahama blue. It's opaque, um, but it thins out really nicely and you can do all sorts of fun things with it. So I'm using a little bit of that gentle heather. Uh, like I said, if you don't have this color in, uh, in your paint rack, you can always use a, a, one of the pinks, um, even a lilac, something with a little bit of purple in it. Now I'm I've thinned this out and I'm bringing a little bit down the center vein of these flowers. Just a little bit. I love that purpley tone. You don't need a ton, but that little blush of color, that little blush of uh, purpley pink, it's so pretty. Put a little on the edges of some of these petals down that center vein. Look how pretty this is. It's delicate looking um, and it doesn't make the flower look like another color. It's still a white flower, but we're using little blushes of that purpley, that cool pink in there. Little bits. It doesn't have to be much. I like little bits and I like a little bit at the edge of the petals. It's just it's soft. And it's delicate. Let's put a little in here, center vein. Again, if it looks a little harsh, just soften it with a little bit with your mop brush. Just a little bit of color. It is soft. It's not a harsh amount of color. I'm going to come to this petal here. I'm going to put a little down the center vein. Look at that. So pretty. just delicate and it's a cool pink so I'm going to pull a little on the edge of the petals right here a little bit down the center vein so I like that it gives the petals a little more structure without being overwhelming gives the petals a nice little shape a little bit of purple just pop a little in. It's all good. There we go. Like this one. A little bit at the tip on these smaller ones. And then there's this one in the middle. I want a punch of that purple right at the tip of that petal. I just love that little bit of yummy color in there. How pretty is that? And then we get this little bit right here. Just a little blush of it at the tip of that petal. And then I need center vein here. Little blush. 
Love it. Such a great color. And it adds a lot of zing to this flower very quickly. Like so. Yum. So it isn't a strong amount of color. I'm going to bring this up a little closer so you can see. A little clearer. It's not a strong amount of color, but it's there. And so it reads as part of the flower. So it's just a blush of that lovely, yummy, pinkish purple. It's a very pretty color. Very pretty. So we're going to start really deepening in here. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Uh, and we're going to start using a little bit of that Prussian blue. And this is really going to deepen some of these shadows. I know you can see a lot of lines yet, uh, but we're going to eliminate those. So I'm using just a tiny amount of that Prussian blue. If you don't have Prussian blue, you can always use Payne's Gray. It will work just as well. It's in that same depth and darkness and value, so it will work well. So we want to bring a little of that Prussian blue into the deepest part of those petals. So right down here, tight, tight, tight to the center of that flower. So this color is heavily thinned. We want it transparent and we're going to bring it in tight. And this is also what we're using to separate and add a little more contrast to these petals. And again, if you feel they're not soft enough, grab your brush. Your mop will take care of it. I love this color. It's just, it's rich, it's dark, it's deep, it does wonderful things. So just try not to overdo it, because it is a strong color. So I like to soften if I feel it's getting a little heavy handed don't don't be afraid to soften it if you soften it too much you can always put more in and if you need to adjust this color a little bit if you need to tone it getting a little too cold looking for you. Uh, don't be afraid to go over it with a little asphaltum. It won't hurt it. It'll warm it up. So I'm going to deepen in here. And this is where you start to see that sharper contrast where the puddles separate a bit more and they look more individual. You get a lot more depth out of this. So I like this sharp contrast that it provides, which is one of the reasons that I like using. So I'm going to separate that little petal there a bit more. And you get really nice contrast. Now we've got more and more shape, more detail showing. Right in there. amazing what a little bit of Prussian blue will do. Love all that contrast that you get with this. She was taking off. Is she? Yeah. She said she loved you. I love her back. <laughs> Yep, 
Miss Sheila's had a busy week. She's been processing orders and just generally had a lot on her plate in the last couple, last few days. So, um, we had a whole pile of orders came back to us uh, from customs because they weren't happy with the paperwork, apparently. So, um, if you are waiting in an order, that is probably why, because there was quite a few of them. Um, a few of you I did manage to notify this week before I had computer issues. So, um, if you haven't received your order, it just bear with us a little longer. We did send them all back out. So, you should have them soon. So I've got all of that Prussian blue in and now it just looks really dark and really muddy and it doesn't look um, all that bright, but we're going to change that. So we're going to take a little bit of warm white and we're going to float a little bit of warm white onto our petals and bring back all of that contrast. So up that center vein opposite that shading we're going to put a nice soft float of warm white like so so that we're going to get nice crisp edges and nice bright petals don't forget that highlighted area out to the tip of those le petals leaves good grief So by floating over this with a little bit of that warm white, going down that center vein opposite that first float that we did with the that um, gentle heather, it brightens these petals considerably. It defines those center veins that we worked so hard to put in, those little details. And that white just softens and diffuses some of those other colors doesn't hide them it just diffuses them a little so it makes for a very pretty daisy so there's that little bit if you find you're having a hard time with the larger angled shader then switch to a smaller one it'll give you a little more control and again don't be afraid to soften things with that mop. Little bright highlight out at the tips of some of these just to give them a little more contrast. for a pretty daisy. You don't need to have a ton of color on your brush to do this. That little blush of color does, doesn't have to be much. So we've got this little heart-shaped petal here. I'm going to put a float of that white across the top. And I'm going to come down the center just a little like that. So now we've got a nice petal. Crisp float out at the edge. It's always amazing to watch something that started out as just a bunch of lines and a bunch of you know indistinct imperfect base colors and then a float here and a float there and the next thing you know you have a daisy nice bright colors nice of contrast I'm going to 
to brighten this one a little bit right here There we go. And then we've got a little petal down here. I kind of got a little bit lost. So I'm just going to bring a little white to the edge. This is the very tip of that petal. There we go. And we have a daisy. So it's still going to look a little ragged. We have another float of asphaltum to put in there just to warm everything up and deepen some other floats. But we're going to come over here and do a little work on the center. This really starts to take shape once this center is in. I'm going to use my round brush and a little bit of sunset gold. I like this yellow a lot. So I'm just going to pity pat it in over top of that white. And our little daisy is taking shape really nicely. Our Asteraceae. love that yellow. So now our flower looks a bit more complete. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to shade into the center using that orange flame, that bright orange. Now although it, that center doesn't look like it has this brilliant orange in it, It does. And we're going to start developing the shape of this by putting a float of that orange flame along here towards us. So underneath that little petal and towards us here so that it comes around to about the halfway mark on either end. And then I'm going to, because this is an ox eye daisy, I'm going to put a U-shaped or a C-shaped float in the center, like so, just to create that indentation that occurs in the daisy. And we're going to dry that real quick. You don't have to putz with that too much. You really don't. Now, I'm going to deepen this with a float of asphaltum. We're going to make that a little deeper. And I've thinned out my asphaltum quite a bit. And this is just brings that orange down a little bit. And it also establishes where our highlights are going to be at the same time. So I'm going to grab my favorite little deer foot. I like this one. It's a 300 series, a quarter inch deer foot. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that uh, yellow that we used in there. You can use sunny day if you want to. And I'm picking up a little bit of warm white just to make it slightly lighter value. And I'm going to just gently stipple the highlight section of this daisy, like so. And right across there, along the bottom of it, I'm going to just a soft little highlight. doesn't have to be much. And it's just to create a little texture at the top and on that highlighted edge right there on the edge of that oxeye. It's a light stipple. You're not 
It's just to create that softness, that fluffy look that they have. Just like that. These little deer foots, a small deer foot is really handy to have. It's great for creating texture. So I'm going to dry this. And then we're going to start doing a little bit of detail work. So I'm using a 10 aught extra long detail liner for this. And I'm going to thin out some warm white. And we're going to create a little bit of dimension on these petals. Now, what we're looking at is right in here. These little areas on the edges of some of these petals towards the center is what we're going to be doing. So a little bit of thin warm white and a little pressure right here and then let the line fade out as it comes up the edge of the petal. So it's a light touch. Small stroke, nothing over the top. That little stroke just creates the illusion of a slight curve or a fold in the petal. And it doesn't have to be much. It doesn't have to be on both sides either. It can be on one side. The other one, especially in this case. That little stroke makes a world of difference. Just like that. When we come to this one here, this petal. And here. It just gives this petal a little more realism, a little more depth. That little bit of white. I get a little bit here too. Now, I had a problem area right here, and I didn't put this in the line drawing because I wasn't sure I was going to, going to leave it there, but um, I had a little problem area here. I didn't like this little flat spot. It just kind of made things a little meh. So I took a small round or rigger and I put a small little petal in like this. Nothing major. I just stroked one in. The reason I did that is that it kind of went flat on this side of the flower. So it needed a little bit of lift. So I put a stroke of warm white in there just to create an additional small petal. And you don't have to overthink this one at all just because it's such a small petal. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that gentle heather and put a little float of that on just a little and at the next stage we're going to actually separate it from everything else so it just gave us a little bit of a fill in a spot where we needed it so i'm going to finish off the center of this flower right here and that little f that little petal took care of a couple of problems it needed a little more texture, a little more life in the center. Um, and I couldn't get it with that open area. So I just decided to pop another little petal in there just to make it work. And there we go. So I'm going to dry this and then we are going to put our final shading on all of these petals 
just to deepen a few, brighten a few highlights without actually adding to the highlight. So I'm going to dry that. And I'm going to thin out a little asphaltum. Very thin, doesn't need to be dark. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to deepen a few little places. Uh, separate a few petals that don't quite have enough separation. Deepen a few shadows. I'm going to deepen a couple of high of shadows. Look at these little center veins right over top of that pink tone that we've got going there. It's a very weak float, so it doesn't alter the color too dramatically. It just deepens it a little. And that little bit of color just adds to the contrast, amps up that that little highlight without having to add more white. And it warms up our flower nicely. So I think we're just about there. I'm gonna go come down here and work on this leaf. So the leaf is really simple. We're going to use a little bit of plantation pine for our shading color. Uh, if you have lamp, uh, not lamp, black, um, black green or dark forest green or plantation pine, all of those will work. We just need a darker value of green. And it should be something that's a little on the transparent side. So we're going to shade underneath the flower on the stem with a float of plantation pine. You're going to bring that float down about at least three quarters of an inch. We want to come down so that we're almost level with this petal here going to give us a nice dark shadow like so and we're going to use that color on the center vein and a few of those little offshoots like this this is not meticulous we just want to add a nice little shadow don't forget to add those those little bits, those little offshoots, those vein lines off of the leaf. They don't have to be perfect. The leaves on daisies tend to be very ragged and very rustic looking. So don't overthink it. I did put a few of them in, in the line drawing, but you can just wing it. It doesn't, isn't going to hurt it. So I'm going to put a little bit of that dark green down the underside on the right lower side of that stem. Do the same thing on the stem holding the leaf. Just like that. So it's going to look a little rough. That's all right. So we're going to grab a little bit of sprout. I like this green. Um, it's a new color from last year. I like it. It's a, a, almost a chartreuse. It's a great color. Sandy Jackson just sent 500 stars from Facebook. Awesome. Thank you, Sandy. So I'm just floating, very weak float, out towards the edge of these leaves. They're not perfect. They're ragged, loose. I'm gonna put a float down the left side of the stem. It's very loose. I'm just using the tip of the brush to put that color in. And, oops, a little too much in there. A little more. So, I want to maintain that ragged look of those leaves. I don't want them to look 
sharp and pretty because they're not sharp and pretty. So I'm going to use the very loose float down the center vein and out to the edges of those leaves. So they're not perfect. I want them loose and rough because the leaves on these flowers are loose and rough. So they kind of have a serrated edge to them so I don't no smooth floats. I love leaves that I can just, you know, smush paint around on. They make they're more interesting. So whenever you want a leaf to have that rough look or that serrated edge, um, I tend to think of it as in little segments and float accordingly. So, you know, little clusters of floats as opposed to one long smooth float. So, you know, think of it that way and then skip a space and lay some more color in. And it just, it'll make your flowers, your leaves look a little more rustic, I think is the word I'm looking for. So imperfect is the name of the game. So once you have that done and it's dry, we want to add just a few more little punches of light to these leaves just to brighten them a little bit. So I picked up a little bit of warm white with that sprout and I got too much. It's too white. I don't want that. So a little bit of warm white and some sprout. There we go. Imperfect. Not neat and tidy. Ragged. I just want to punch up those highlights a little bit in a few places. Neatness doesn't count for this by any stretch. I kind of like that, the irregularities, the imperfections, that rough and ragged. It just seems to work with, especially with daisies, wildflowers in general. So someone suggested, um, I think it was Donna, um, doing a piece with a pumpkin and um, bittersweet. And I'm thinking she means the berries. Um, pumpkin and bittersweet. Bittersweet is actually nightshade. So I'm thinking the berries. Because <laughs> the flowers are teeny tiny. They're very pretty. But they're very teeny tiny. So we've got our leaves done. Again, I'm not really worrying about whether or not they're perfect. I like that sort of ragged look to them. So our next step for this is to finish off some of these details in the center of our flower. And I'm going to come back to my little deer foot with a little bit of just straight warm white. Um, and it's really ragged and very open. And I'm just going to... Add a little bit of highlight to the center, just a tiny bit, just to make the center look a little fuzzy, I think is the word I'm looking for, just fuzzy. And I let it come past the edges of the flower a little bit. And then I'm going to take my rigger, a liner, a stylus, whatever you want to work with, and I'm just going to add some small dip dots, not a ton of them. I don't want them to be too heavy. And I'm trying to keep them as small as I can. I come back the, past the edge a little bit. Do the same on this area here so that it adds to that highlighted section. Like so. And then I'm going to do that again with a little bit of a schvaltum. And I'm going to do that down here. Again, I'm keeping the dots as small as I possibly can down into this edge here, underneath our 
little petal there. I like to come out over the edge a little bit but I want these dots really tiny and irregular. I don't want them too consistent. That's going to give us a nice little shadow in there. Just like I like the white to give us a nice punch of, of bright. And there we have a nice soft center. So all we have left now is to add our lettering. I'm going to make sure this is good and dry before I do that. I love these French florals. I just think they're so pretty when you arrange them all together. Especially when the backgrounds are all consistent and you have all these different flowers on there. And we have a fairly nice variety. I think we're up to like 10 now of these French florals. So I'm going to, this is another benefit to using the line drawing the way I do, is I can reposition it accurately. So I'm going to put it into place up here and tape it down. and position my graphite underneath. And I'm coming back to my red pen. I love this. I like having that ultra fine point. So when you're tracing your lettering, um, try to keep it as accurate as possible. If your lettering happens to have a whole lot of really sharp vertical, straight vertical lines, get out a ruler and use the edge of a steel edge ruler to trace just to give yourself you know, a little leg up when it comes to tracing vertical and horizontal lines. If you're using a ruler, it'll keep everything nice and straight and true. And it is so much easier to paint to a straight line than it is to a crooked one. So if you are doing any kind of lettering, block lettering, uh, anything with a lot of vertical and horizontal lines, break out a ruler you're going to be grateful you did because while you're painting coming up to a straight line with a paintbrush is so much simpler than trying to create a straight line to a crooked one it just doesn't work so a ruler is a handy tool to have now when tracing lettering firm pressure is fine but don't press so hard that you feel as if you were drawing instead of outlining it should be fairly fluid if you want nice smooth lines use nice smooth lines if you are breaking a sweat or your hand starts aching because you're tracing then you're putting too much pressure on the pencil the pen and yourself so just take a deep breath medium to firm pressure is all that's really necessary and i'll just do a double check to make sure i got all of the elements yes I do so our lettering is ready to paint so I'm using a zero rigger for this if you have something smaller um, you can use that I like the zero it's a good size for this so I'm going to thin out warm white and I'm using a zero rigger and I've tapped it so that I get that chisel edge. So when you look at my brush, it's nice and flat. So I can start at the top of the letter, press down till it fills that space and bring the brush right up to the edge of the flower. Like so. And I'm going to do tap it square start at the top of the letter press till it fills the space and then bring it down and come back up onto the chisel edge like so I love a rigger it just gives you really nice smooth 
lettering. It's just a matter of learning the brush control when to press, press, when to release, when to press. It does make your life a little easier when you have the right brush for the right job. So chisel edge, press up onto the chisel edge. The nice thing about doing this type of lettering is that you do not have to have it fully opaque. It doesn't have to be. If the brush is loaded well, the brush flows off, the paint flows off of the brush, you're going to get nice consistent lettering anyway once you have your paint thin just so. Then I can use the chisel edge of that brush to do all of those fine connections on this lettering. So if I miss a spot or I miss a gap, it's okay. I'm going to come back and get it anyway. I find painting lettering cathartic. It's to me it's relaxing. And we do it every day. But yet it's also always terrifying to us to do lettering. So Astoracea. Lettering is no different than stroke work, quite honestly. It takes a little bit of practice. It's all about the brush control, learning to control how the brush bends and moves and getting the right amount of paint in it. It's all about brush control. So there we go, Asteracea. So I'm going to dry this really well and I'm going to remove the graphite lines. And then we will finish off this piece with a little bit of lettering. Just going to punch this lettering up a little bit. Make sure it's well dry. And I'm going to grab my favorite eraser. This is a Factus Black. I use this a lot to remove graphite lines, especially on black surfaces, dark surfaces, because it doesn't polish the paint. Um, and the other one that I use a lot is my Tombow Black eraser because it works very, very much the same. I can remove graphite very easily from my painted surfaces without damaging my paint. So to finish off this lettering, I'm going to use my half inch angle and a little bit of asphaltum. And I'm going to put a float of asphaltum along the bottom of my lettering. Come up about a half way. Doesn't have to be strong. And then we're going to float behind that flower and over top of the lettering here with a little bit of lamp black. And all this is going to do is just set that lettering back a little bit so that it tucks it in behind the floral. Just like that. Simple. And at this stage, you can go around with that lamp black and just clean up any little areas where you may have over floated or you got too much color on the background or you just want to clean up a few little areas. So we'll dry it, we'll remove all of the graphite lines and then you can spatter this with a little bit of 24 karat gold if you like. Um, I kind of like the little bit of gold spatter but it's not necessary if you don't want to do it. So wherever you see graphite lines that need to be cleaned up, get in there with your black eraser. And Bob's your uncle, Sally's your aunt. I just find that by removing all of those graphite lines, it just cleans everything up. 
just gives it a much more finished and polished look. So if you decide to spatter with a little 24 karat gold, you can go ahead and do that. To finish this, two to three light coats of Dacoart matte spray, um, just to seal it up nice and tight. And then you can apply uh, two to three coats of your favorite varnish. For me, it's Dacoart Ultra Matte Varnish. I like a matte finish, that's my favorite varnish for this. And then you have an additional daisy to add to your collection of French florals. An easy one and a really pretty one. The wheel. Yeah, so now we're going to go to the wheel and we're going to spin. We've got three nice giveaways today. Uh, we have uh, some Dynasty water lily brushes are in there and some goodies from uh, ugh, Southern Ridge Trading. My brain shut off. Sorry about that. We have some goodies from Southern Ridge Trading. And of course, there's always goodies from us, always tucked in there. So Renee is loading the wheel and making note of who our winners are going to be. You can tell Falls here. I'm going to be Scully for quite some time now. I like my skulls. Speaking of skulls, I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have some uh, skull pins popping up very soon. Uh, I got some fabulous new surfaces, so I'm playing with paint and making some skull pins. Robin Wilson. Awesome, Miss Robin. So the uh, part of the computer issues that we're having, I've been having this week, uh, the little speech bubble on my website is not functioning properly. Um, so just go to the contact button, uh, under contacts you can find it on the website and send me an apron with your shipping <laughs> send me an apron I looked down saw the word apron send me an email <laughs> with your shipping information please and we will get your goodies out to you as soon as possible oh my gosh brain not functioning she kept my yes Cindy I know I, I usually use my black gel pen but in these ones I didn't I didn't see the need. I just loved them the way they are. So Robin Wilson, we got two more to go. Hi, Debbie Visser. Robin R. Robin R. I'll be Robin Richer or Riche. It's a Robin day today. City Brain, she says, Renee, I'm still waiting for you to say my name. What's the issue? <laughs> he doesn't get to say it. It's the wheel that gets to say it. And one more. I keep watching the chat here. Cindy's feeling left out. <laughs> Free to body. Excellent. So Free to body, Robin Richer, Richer or Riche, and Robin Wilson are our winners for today. Next Saturday, we're going to be playing with a little bit of mixed media. I've got a fun little fall project for you. So, uh, Break out all of your mixed media stuff, a little bit of fluid acrylics and some Americana. I'm going to throw, sort of throw everything at it this week. And we will see you next Saturday. We're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, we are slowly creeping up on our 12 days of Christmas. So uh, we're watching that number. We're at 86.94% of our goal 5,000 for the Glitter Fund. Christmas for the puppers so we're anxious about that and excited and can't thank you guys enough for uh, helping us try to reach that goal that's great and so mixed media for next week we have some awesome giveaways for next week too um, I have some uh, nice little surprises for you guys and uh, what else my brain shut off again that's okay
it'll it'll slip into gear at some point or another so thank you so much as always for joining us as you do every saturday i missed you guys the last couple of weeks so uh, we will go at this great guns again and uh, keep your eyes peeled new pattern will be up by monday so everybody have a great weekend we love you please stay safe and pet your dog <laughs> he doesn't have a microphone today